Well, today it feels again a little bit uh, like Christmas. I ordered something and I got a little box. And what I want to do now is, is I want to unpack it and we're going to have a look at it. It happens to be a slide ringing table. And I'm also going to later on in the video show you how to use it and what you can do with it. Well, I'm now unboxing the thing that I ordered. Uh, inside the box there was another box uh, and uh, this box was quite heavy, obviously, because the slide ring table is made of solid metal. And the first thing that I took out uh, were four brushes and uh, they are used to apply the ringing paint on the slide. And uh, they supplied me with uh, three of them, a bronzeal white, black and bronzeal gold. Um, and what I read is it's not only they're diff not only different in color, but they also have slightly different properties. And now here, this is the main part, the slide ringing table. Um, it's actually smaller than I expected, uh, and this is actually quite good because I was already worried it's getting too big uh, for storage purposes. Um, so it's quite compact, um, and uh, as I already mentioned, uh, made of solid metal and relatively heavy for stability reasons. This is uh, the turning table and uh, the black uh, large thing on, on the left here is that is the hand or arm rest because uh, you need uh, to stabilize uh, your arm when you apply the paint. And this is basically an example, this is what I want to make. Okay, So this is a ringed slide um, and uh, you basically you make this by putting a slide on the slide ringing table and then applying a paint with a brush. Yeah, uh, these are commercial slides here, just as an example. Not all of them are ringed quite nicely. The second one from top looks a little sloppy. And this is, that's the package contents. The four brushes, three paints and the slide ringing table itself. And yeah, these are water-based uh, yeah, water based paints. Now let's have a closer look here, okay? so. Um, first of all, the thing that kind of surprised me is, is that the ringing table actually was uh, turning quite smoothly. Um, so there seems to be some kind of a ball bearing, I suppose, in there. Um, it was uh, quite smoothly well made, the whole thing. Um, very solid. Um, and you can also see that on the, on the brass table or copper table, there are some rings engraved. And these are basically the sort of guidance. Um, to uh, so that uh, the slide is properly centered and of course there are also clips on here to hold the slide in place and uh, yeah so that is basically it was actually turning spinning for 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 several minutes it was actually that efficient it's the bottom side and uh, it's like this that it's not possible for the ringing the rotating uh, table to drop out um, and I put everything on the scale and it was almost one and a half kilograms so it's, as I mentioned, it's quite uh, quite solidly made, um, and I couldn't resist. I just wanted to actually see now um, what actually is it that uh, causes uh, the rotating table to run so efficiently. So I wanted to have a closer look. I was actually looking out for ball bearing or something like that, and uh, sure enough, I did find uh, the secret, the trade secret for making such a thing, um, because there was indeed there was not a ball bearing in the classical sense, but there was indeed a little steel ball in in there and we, yeah that's the steel ball um, you've seen that it falls out right and this is the the, the secret uh, here uh, because this one actually uh, ensures uh, that there is uh, very little friction when the table is uh, turning yeah so what i did is i put everything back together again of course uh, the steel ball goes back um, and yeah i assembled everything again but the way it's designed is such uh, that uh, you cannot remove the spinning table uh, when uh, when it's mounted uh, to the hand rest. It's it's not able to drop out. It's actually uh, quite uh, quite good. Yeah. And there's also a little um, other grip uh, on the bottom of the table which allows you to spin it efficiently with your other hand. And yeah, and now I'm trying it out. Um, so what I'm doing first is I'm trying to uh, simply put a spacer ring on this slide. So I'm clipping the slide uh, using the two clips. Obviously, I'm centering everything. Yeah. And then I'm simply trying to apply some of the, the black paint here. I'm rotating it, giving it a spin. And yeah, that's basically what I'm doing right now. I'm applying a spacer ring. Probably a little bit thick, I would say. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's the first time I'm actually trying this. So maybe with a little bit more practice, I can, uh, you, I can apply thinner rings here. And uh, yeah, now uh, some sample material because I actually also want to try it out. This is pollen, spruce pollen, um, and uh, um, I'm making a so-called a dry mount. So this means I'm not using any liquid uh, mounting medium. 
but I still want to preserve them. So I'm simply, uh, yeah, putting a round cover glass on top, pressing everything slightly flat a little bit uh, because I want to make sure that the round cover glass and the ring, the black ring, actually make good contact. And now I'm trying to seal everything uh, by applying over the cover glass uh, and the ring some more paint and I kind of hope that this way uh, the cover glass will be solidly connected but unfortunately um, I moved the cover glass so I have to use my general purpose tweezers to recenter the cover glass I'm doing this right now so I was a little bit too yeah too careless uh, when I did that but it's uh, easily uh, you can center it quite easily and then uh, yeah, I applied uh, some paint to seal the cover glass off and this is how it looks like, okay, after a couple of minutes uh, of drying time. I think that the Brunzeal Black that I used could uh, be diluted a little bit more with water, um, so to make the paint uh, flow a little bit better. Um, yeah, but it's okay. Yeah. So that's uh, basically now where I'm simply looking at it, so that we can also see some micrographs, and that is basically in dark field. These are the pollen grains from spruce, the spruce tree. Yeah, I'm refocusing here a dark field. You know that because the background is dark and the pollen grains are bright. And yet at a higher magnification and you can see that always some of the pollen grains are a little bit out of focus. And this is the reason is, is because they are stacked on top of each other. And this is the case because I applied a spacer ring. Um, without the spacer ring, the cover glass would actually push them all flat uh, towards the slide. And uh, that would make, probably make it easier to focus uh, because then you're all in one uh, one one plane level. Um, but uh, yeah, I just wanted to uh, to try it with a space ring. It gives it a little bit of a slightly more natural appearance if they're also stacked on top of each other. And uh, of course, I not only used um, dark field, uh, but I also used epi illumination. It means I switched off the microscope light and then I used my desk lamp to shine some light from the top. And now you can actually see it even better that the, the pollen grains are stacked on top of each other. And that is uh, also uh, one of the reasons why I actually used uh, the spacer ring, because I wanted to make sure that the pollen, the aggregates stay as uh, they are naturally. And you also use these spacer rings if you, for example, want to use as a larger water organisms like water fleas and so on. You do not want them to become squashed by the cover glass. Um, so that's why uh, you also use spacer rings. Yeah, and some still images here using some digital zoom. Okay, and I think that should be enough for right now. Well, besides making spacer rings, are there any other reasons why you might want to use a slide ringing table? Well, besides making uh, space rings, are there any other reasons why you might want to use a slide ringing table? And of course there are. Um, usually or traditionally have also been used uh, for certain uh, mounting media like uh, glycerol jelly. Um, and these are mounting media that uh, are not completely dry. So this means is they retain a little bit of water. Um, and in order to prevent uh, evaporation of the water, uh, you put a ring um, around uh, the cover glass. And uh, it also helps, the ring also helps to stabilize the cover glass a little bit. Uh, so this means uh, it kind of glues it uh, to the slide and this uh, adds uh, long-term stability. And last but not least, of course, uh, ringed slides they kind of look very nice uh, and so there's also a certain aesthetic appeal and uh, last uh, i also wanted to mention that i not only experimented with bronzeal black uh, but uh, also with uh, nail varnish uh, which i bought in a local shop um, and uh, the results are a little bit different um, first of all the nail varnish was very viscous so i had to dilute it quite a bit uh, with acetone and to make it flow properly um, it dried very quickly so you had to work quite uh, rapidly then um, but uh, i also found that the nail varnish uh, when it uh, dried it uh, shrunk quite a bit so it was necessary to 
uh, apply several layers in order to get a, a reasonable distance, um, you know, spacer distance. Um, so um, I think uh, that different substances have advantages and disadvantages, but one of the advantages of nail varnish that I found out is it was quite uh, quite hard, so it was uh, difficult to scratch off. I, I think that uh, Brunzeal Black is a little bit more easily, uh, you can uh, more easily remove that, but again has the advantage that it is uh, water-based and you do not work around with solvents. So you see uh, different uh, substances have uh, their own advantages and disadvantages. Um, yeah, so this was uh, pretty much it. Um, I wish you as always, uh, yeah, um, have a nice day. Happy microbe hunting. And if you have any comments uh, or experiences concerning slide ringing, please also write this down in the comment section below. Bye-bye. All the best.